Hi guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. As we are actually now on the testing server in Season 13, trying out some of the new Roman units. So, I've been doing a little bit of testing with King Alpha, trying out the units in sort of various combinations as we normally do, kind of through this, um, through the start of the PTR. Always really kind of interesting to see how the units are performing, what seems good, what seems bad, etc. Now, it is worth noting a few caveats to this, as always. Things do sometimes, or often, change from the PTR by the time they actually get to the live version, when it goes live on the 1st of September. And these are also one-on-one -on -one fights, right? There's different veterancy lines, different situations. Maybe they'll work much better in a siege battle where there's bigger fights, or you can focus down individual units, etc. There's a million and one combinations. So, you've got to take them with a little bit of a pinch of salt. But they are kind of interesting to get a few characteristic ideas about how the unit's performing. So we'll kick things off with a tier three, and I'm gonna go for Dimacharii. Don't know if that's correct at all, but they are quite an interesting unit, and they play a lot like Sons of Fenrir in my opinion. They are a two weapon unit that moves very quickly. They have a really nice high base movement speed, and they've got two basically high burst abilities. The first being this sort of lunge ability. They go in, they hit twice, and it does ignore block. So it does hit through Imperial Shield Guards, um, it hits through the new Roman unit shields, and interestingly, it will actually hit the hero inside the shield unit as well. They then also have this torrent, which is where they leap up and do sort of an overhead swing. Really, really surprisingly high damage. Two or three K per hit, and, you know, it is a unit with 50 models in it, so they get clumped up quite together, and you can input some serious damage. Toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sons of Fenrir, they do seem to lose, but in terms of playstyle, I find them remarkably similar to Sons of Fenrir. In terms of stats, they do have 12,500 hit points, but their defensive stats are really a little bit on the low side. In terms of damage, they've got a pretty nice base 1500 damage, with the slashing penetration coming in at 1325. But I haven't got any piercing AP doctrines to put on them, which I would actually be doing, or a slashing AP doctrine in this case. So I would be looking to get that to the round the 1400 mark in the actual live server. So yeah, let's hop into a few battles with them. I kind of firstly wanted to try them against the new tier 4 unit. You can see they go in, get stuck in and they do start to land some hits. With the um, overhead sort of torrent that they use, you can see they do start to then break through and hit through the enemy block and start to cause damage against these shields. But you can see that the Roman shields just don't have enough damage ability to kill them at all. Um, we then tried with different veterancy lines. I was using the top line, King using the bottom line, and you can see the bottom line quite easily dominates here in this fight. Followed then by trying them against some halberdiers, which doesn't really work out very well for the unit. You can see how they get dominated quite effectively, and the halberdiers, because the unit can't break through and get to the back ranks, the back ranks can continue to stab, and even though this unit has very high burst damage, they're not actually that strong. Finally, just for fun, I tested them against the new tier 5 unit, and I was actually surprised how much damage they were able to do against the new tier 5 javelins. Look how much they actually managed to cut them down. These tier 3s are quite strong. Next up, we have, well, the unit that looks most like a Roman soldier, I guess, or at least in terms of his shield. He's like a, a Roman Mermelo gladiator. Um, one of the best looking units, but probably the most disappointing of the three that we're getting in the new season. They are essentially a shield unit. It's kind of interesting, I thought, that they introduced the tier four, but they, at the same time they've introduced two other units which basically ignore block which kind of makes the shield unit slightly redundant. They do classify as a heavy shield, so you can put the full set of shield doctrines on them, and they do block and hold up relatively well, but I would say they have a couple of big problems. One, they don't have any armour, so once they're blocked down, their defensive stats aren't that great when you compare it to something like an Imperial Shield Guard, and so therefore they can die relatively quickly. The second and the main problem is their damage. When I say it's low, it is shockingly low. They do nothing to enemy units or heroes, and so they basically just can't kill anything. And so that puts them basically as a solely defensive unit. 
The only decent offensive ability they have is their charge. It's uh, Mermelo's guard. And they sort of run to the end of the unit, stop and do like a shield swing, which does a decent chunk of damage and does not throw enemy units. But once that's over, it gets put on a relatively long cooldown and you have no other abilities. The unit does no damage. And, and so then what? <laughs> they sort of become a little bit redundant. So for me, the damage is just so low that they're really hard to make use of effectively. To try and demonstrate this, I charge the front of some 40s. They use their active block on the charge to get through the front ranks and actually it works really well. But then we're going to sit here now for the next 30 seconds watching the unit extremely slowly kill these 40s. They even actually break formation and try and go into stab. But since that didn't work, King actually managed to get them back into formation. <laughs> uh, and still nothing is happening. I hope you all brought a cup of tea because... It just takes them so long to cut through the unit, there's no way that an enemy hero wouldn't turn up and solve the situation or another unit wouldn't appear. It just kind of makes them very hard to use them in any sort of exploitable way. And very slowly, we're starting to get through the 40s, a couple of hundred damage at a time, <laughs> and eventually they manage to get through. But I kind of think that kind of highlights the problem of why the damage is just so low. A kind of similar situation with Grey Hairs, charge in, but the bulk of the charge damage gets blocked by the Grey Hairs, but the Grey Hairs can fight back. And so, in this case, the Tier 4 still can't do any damage, but the Grey Hairs can fight back. And their block and the defensive attributes just aren't good enough to really deal with that. We then tried it against Berserkers, and their charge did actually manage to kill one or two of them before we managed to get the Berserk off. And whilst they didn't manage to completely wipe the unit out with Berserk, I then came across the interesting problem that the damage from this enemy tier 4 shield unit is actually so low, I can't activate the Berserk on my Berserkers. <laughs> I'm actually not taking enough damage to trigger the Berserk mode. It takes ages for it to build up. <laughs> it's kind of a unique problem to have before it finally activates. Finally, we come on to the tier 5 unit, the Retiarii. Well, that's what I'm going to gonna go with this kind of interesting trident wielding javelin unit which is actually really interesting my initial impression of these wasn't very good i was kind of struggling to get them to work for me but they do have a few interesting features and kind of as time's gone on and as we did more testing with king we sort of saw that they do actually have some potential in terms of the damage output they can put out I think the first thing to clear up is they aren't a tier 5 javelin unit. The tier 4 javelins are better as a flat javelin unit. These guys only get one javelin throw, this doom throw, which admittedly does have a very good name. And it is a decent throw. And the javelins do a good chunk of damage. But once you make your one throw, it goes into cooldown. There's no other throwing abilities. Um, there's no double throw, nothing like that. They're not really a solid javelin unit in that sense. They're a hybrid, partially javelin, partially melee, in a way that Imperial Javelins and Javelin Sergeants just aren't really. They're sort of more solely javelin units. So when you throw a javelin at anyone, they both do a good chunk of damage, they hit through block, and they also attribute Mark of Death, which basically means that enemies then take more damage when they get hit by a follow-up ability. So they have two follow-up abilities, two charges basically. Something called Trident Charge, where they run up to the enemy and then sort of leap and stab. And then they also have something called Spear Fishing, which is where they charge and do like a three-way, almost like um, the Spear's ultimate ability, like a three-way stab. Spear Fishing seems easily the more dominant of these two abilities. And it's this that really seems to carry the unit. Because if you can get a few bits of good chunk of damage and a few models down with the Doom Throw, get the Mark of Death on the unit and then charge in with the Spear Fishing, it can really uh, sort of apply a lot of damage in a very short period of time. I have been running them on the top line. As we sort of discovered this more about the Spear Fishing, I might be inclined to go down the bottom line because things like this, reducing the extra damage taken during Spear Fishing, could make them a really interesting unit and make this sort of the more dominant ability that you're using. Um, in terms of um, doctrines, they do class as a javelin unit, so you can put all 
the usual javelin doctrines on them, which is kind of nice. And because that they you don't actually get to throw the javelins all that often, then you really don't seem to run out of ammo very quickly. Because they actually have a decent amount, 67. Um, and yeah, they don't seem to run out of ammo very quickly, in my opinion. The other thing to note is that the Doom Throw isn't like a, a click point ability. It's sort of more like a musket's focus fire. So they throw across a line. So you can't target down enemy heroes like you can with Imperial Javelins and Javelin Sergeants in quite the same way. Initially, we'll kick things off with some Celadars. Take a bit of a jab volley through before we close up to cover Commander. The unit uses spearfishing and actually takes me out as a hero really quickly. But with even me dead, the Celadars were able to take the day and cut through the unit relatively easily with minimal amounts of losses. After that, we go on to Iron Reapers, where the story is actually completely opposite. Charging in with spearfishing, we're able to just absolutely obliterate the Iron Reapers for fairly minimal losses. And there we go, all the Iron Reapers are dead, so they do beat them. Up against Berserkers, we do take quite a bit of damage from the Javelins. And even in Berserk mode, it is not enough to deal with the overwhelming amount of damage you get from spearfishing. So these new Tier 5 Javs do beat Berserkers, which is nice to see. We did try them against some cavalry, against some Cataphracts. And even though it gets a little bit of a stun on them, it's not really enough to stop the unit from running over them. Finally, I did some testing against Varyngians, but I didn't really do it in the way I wanted. I started with the one ability with the Trident, and it definitely should have started with the Spearfishing, because I think I would have done a lot more damage early on and not taken so much damage in return. So I think they could potentially beat the Varyngians. I just need to change the way I'm doing it. Anyway, that's just a little bit of testing that I've been doing with the unit so far. It's by no means exhaustive. It's going to be very different when things come out, but hopefully it gives you a little bit of an idea, at least how the units might play initially. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for lots more Conquer's Blade content. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you all on the next one.